Hi, my name is Steve Saparito. I am based in Melbourne, Australia, and every Virgin Lounge around the world, it seems. Um, I, my business is called Intuition to Succeed, and together with Kelly Van Yam and myself, we train photographers on how to create an unbelievable experience for your clients, which leaves them wanting to reward you with their money, which is pretty awesome. So I'm going to talk about the six tips on how to create an effortless um, premiere or in-person um, design consultation for your clients. Um, the first thing I recommend is to, is to watch your terminolo terminology and language. For me, to create uh, a photographic experience for a client has far much more value than just shooting and then viewing uh, with your clients. Um, particularly, I know, to me, our clients aren't used to our terminology and they get a little bit confused when we start using photo, photo jargon. So translating shooting and viewing to me, you know, viewing is something that you do at a morgue and it's sort of apt that we would be shooting them before we do the viewing. So it, when we're talking to our clients and we're talking to them about creating a photographic experience, people begin to see the value in what we're doing. The second thing that you need to consider when you are creating uh, an effortless premiere for them is that I highly recommend that you show them, or, oh, fuck. what am I going to say? I'm, I'm going to go to projection. Okay. So the second tip that I highly recommend is that you move into a projected situation where you can project what you're showing them, so then your clients are beginning to get used to seeing life-size uh, photographs of themselves, and when you're creating your artwork, you can project to size. Now, I know there's a lot of debate as to whether we should use, use um, a TV monitor or a, a projected um, image for them, and what I found is that, and of course, I'm, I'm training studios all over the world, so I've got the benefit of seeing how people react across the board. And when statistically, when we switch from an LCD, LCD, what am I saying? <laughs> a plasma, we used to call them a plasma, I'm old, what is it? L uh, LED? LED monitor? Oh, these things, these flat things. screen. A flat yeah, screen, yeah. okay. Yeah. Start again? You might have to start that again, yeah. Okay. My second tip for creating an effortless premiere is to project. And there's been a lot of debate as to whether we should be using a flat screen monitor or a projection system. And what I've found across the board, across my members, is that when we switch from a flat screen monitor to projection, our sales go up. And I've analysed why this seems to be happening. and. I've found that because we can project to real size, if you're selling, putting a collection together especially, um, we can show our clients up to 80, 100 inches wide. And some of the collections that my members are selling uh, do reach that size, actually most of them do. And it's not possible to do that with a flat screen um, system. The other thing is, is that a flat screen is a light source. So when a client looks at um, the maximum size you can show them, which, which may be an 1114 or a 1620, depending upon the size of your screen, because it's a light source, to them it appears one or two sizes bigger than it actually is. Whereas when you're using a projection system, it's a reflected image. So it removes some of the confusion from clients when they're looking at that sized up um, sized up screen because most of them you're training them to see that size and they'll say well what's the size on the screen I like that size but then when they receive what they're getting they're, they're, they're often used to say oh I thought it was going to be bigger than that that's because 
they're looking at, a, at an image that is pumping light into their eyes. And we want to eliminate as much confusion as possible for every client. My third tip is to have product available for them to buy. Really be strategic about your product. It's really important for you to have product that they can see because people buy what they see. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see in a lot of studios when I walk in is that they also have product on display that they don't really want the clients to see or buy. So you need to treat your, the area where you're going to be showcasing your product, whether it's in the client's home or whether it's in a dedicated uh, selling space, you must, must only display the best of what you want to sell. This is not a scratch and dint sale, whereby you're using whatever the clients haven't picked up as your displays. So you need to, you, to have this space set up like a, a brand new um, car sales display. They only have the very best of what they have on offer. So yes, you know, when you walk into a new car sales room, yes, you can order plastic hubcaps and um, cloth trim, but you must do it while you're looking at leather trim and alloy wheels. So it's the same. Yes, you can order an 8x10, but you'll do that while you're looking at my beautiful artwork or collections um, on my wall. And what number are we up to? Four? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's good though. That's, that's a really good idea. You're the first person who hasn't stopped between each one and looked at your notes, so yeah. Oh, okay. I don't have any notes, that's why. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Tip number four is that you must understand the psychology behind how to set up your design space. So the rules are the same whether you are going out to meet your clients in their home, or whether you are um, whether you have a dedicated space. So what I've found what what I've done a lot of NLP training and um, what I use a lot of NLP in working out um, how to build a strong rapport with clients and how to communicate well with clients. Now, most people uh, tend to be right brain orientated. Um, and when you ask them a question, when a right brain orientated person goes into a visual remembered mode, so when a person's looking at the photograph that you're wanting, they're thinking about buying, as they're imagining it being placed in their home somewhere, when they enter a visual remembered mode, what they do is they look up to the left. So that becomes the penthouse of your, um, of your design consultation space. So what you tend to have in that upper left quadrant tends to be what, they will, what they'll buy. So that becomes really important to think about as, you, as you're setting up the layout and where you place your product to them. When I'm walking into a lot of studios, what I'm finding is, is that if you have windows or doors on this side, people are struggling to decide. And what ends up happening is the clients enter a, uh, a strong sense of confusion and they tend to ask you, can I have it on a disc? So they'll start... Um, believing that they want to buy things and then opt out at the end because they start to get um, they start to get confused as to where they what they should be doing with it and so then they believe that if I just ask for it a disc it's all too hard right now I'll come back and revisit it so tip number five you really do need to understand your client so begin to start to learn about people's personalities and what they and what that means to you as a salesperson. I teach um, in my membership about bird personalities. And I can't even remember how many there are. I think there's about nine, nine to 12 different bird personalities. But I'll, t I'll just take you through perhaps one or two of them. So our business seems to attract lots of peacocks and doves. So what a peacock uh, comes into your into your business. They're people that love the limelight. They want to be the centre of attention, and they love whatever's shiny and new. So when you are 
photographing a peacock, you must have them as the centerpiece of every photo because, say, it's a family group, you need to keep them centered. So it even changes the way you photograph once you begin to understand people's personality types. So when a peacock comes in um, and is deciding what, what to buy, pe peacocks are totally spontaneous. They're the type of person that when they see something, they're like, yep, I've got to have it. If you then start to say, are you sure? Then they begin to doubt themselves and then reject what you're buying. Uh, also, when you are selling to a peacock, you need to show them your, your brand new product and tell and let them know that you know, your friends are gonna love this um, and I can just see you know, when they come and visit you, this is gonna be a centerpiece for you to talk about because they wanna be the center of attention. Whereas almost the opposite of that is a dove. So doves are caring, caring birds. They're people that never buy for themselves. They tend to buy for other people. So if you were to say to, to a dove, you, you need to buy this because you look awesome in this, they would be totally uncomfortable with this. You would make them feel really, really um, un, unsure about purchasing something. Whereas if they were buying something for their children or buying something for their husband, they would totally be on board with that. So you need to absolutely consider what sort of person you have in front of you before you begin to even contemplate selling to someone. I forgot what number I'm up to. Six? Yeah, yeah. that was awesome. <coughs> yeah, really good. Um, don't want to throw you a curveball, Steve, but um, do you have, there's a bit of a question I have as well, but I've been now being a studio focused. Um, so I'm sure you have something for people who don't have a studio, meet people in cafes, something like that. Is anything you should never meet anybody in a cafe. Okay, maybe that should be. I've said whether you do it in your home, yeah. in the pe person's home. Yeah. So you either go to their home or you do it in a studio. Okay. You never meet anybody in a cafe. So if you don't have access to a studio in your own home and just make it look nice? Make your room in your own home or go to their home. Okay. Do you want me to do that? Yeah, that would be a good one. What would, what, I was just curious, what was the last tip anyhow that you were going to do? I was going to pull something out of my arm. <laughs> well, there's something I've pulled out of my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, I think that's a good one because that goes against what they've said, what one of the people have said. They said about the cafe, didn't they? Yeah, like, yeah. Find a cafe that you go to regularly, send them a menu and ask them what, you know, what drink they want when they arrive. There's too much distraction. Okay, cool. Let's yeah, do I, that one uh, I, Ever since I bought my studio, it's been, it's been sales have went up. Well, then they, they believe that you're not really in business and then they think they have every right to ask you for a discount. And oh, yeah. Yeah, so Bend you over a barrel. Yeah. Really? If you, if you don't have a studio. Cool. All right. So you want that? Yeah. You want me to talk about that? Yeah, that would be six. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. if you don't have a dedicated selling space? Yeah. Yes. Because I think a lot of the readers for your shop is like, I'm in, yeah, I'm in that position. Yeah, you're in that position. Yeah. yeah. So it relates to me and a lot of people that I've talked to. Okay. Well, how do you project in a cafe? You can't project in a cafe. No. And the rule is, like when I've gone in and switched from, um, when I've gone in and switched, made them put their, their kick-ass LE, you know, their plasma screen on eBay and switched them to projection. So they've just sold a $6,000 thing on eBay and spent $800 on projector. Their sales went up on average $900. Wow. Like yeah. how much is it costing you to keep that stupid thing? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so tip number, tip number six is if you don't have a dedicated um, space where you can do a design consultation, and, and I, I choose the word design consultation rather than, um, rather than a, what do most people call it, a viewing, because a design cons consult totally adds value to this experience. So if you don't have a design consultation space, go to the client's home, don't meet them in a cafe, because there's so much distraction. There's people walking past, um, there's so much noise, it becomes difficult to hear, and the clients really struggle to focus. So amongst all that noise, it's really difficult for people to make um, big decisions. So yes, it will work, and you will probably reach a level um, 
of, of success, but you will be capping your, your success. A client is much more likely uh, to have a much better experience in an environment where they can focus without distraction. So if you don't have a, a dedicated space, go to their homes and use that as a way to say, hey, I'm giving you this added service because I can come in and design something specific for your home. So always turn something into a positive. There, you would always bring a, a, a projector with you. It gives you the opportunity to scope out the home and choose the right product for them. Obviously, that the very, very best version is for them to come to you in a, in a, a totally set up um, scenario in your, in your studio um, where you can set it up to maximize subliminal selling with them. But if you don't have that opportunity, go to them and, and let them know of all of the reasons that this is a great way of doing it and project on one of their walls. Always, always, always carry a portable screen just in case there's absolutely nowhere that they should be doing it. But I, when I have been put into the situation where I've had to project on somebody's wall, I even look for somewhere where I get them to take some of what they already have on the wall off, off the wall for me to project on because that then makes that available to you. If the clients are prepared to take something off the wall for you to project on, when they're, they're looking at artwork, they're much more willing to swap over some of the things that have been there for way too long anyway, and you're beginning to train them on what they should be doing with their wall art. Okay, so thanks so much to ShotKit for giving me this opportunity to share some information with you guys. Um, it's really important for our industry to get the right information out and for you guys to create the very best experience for your clients. So if you want to find out a little bit more about what Intuition to Succeed has to offer, just head over to the site. It's www.intuition, um, not the letter two, but to succeed. Thanks, guys.